Today, I'm going to teach you how to closet cheat in CS2. Closet cheating is when you're cheating, but you don't want people to know that you're cheating. You want to pretend you're just a normal person who happens to be good at video games. Let's go over the cheating categories and start with what most cheaters struggle with. Whether you want to just use radar, visible champs, or full-on walls, it all comes down to the same rule. Do not act like you know where everyone is. Obviously, you do know, but you have to pretend that you don't. If you're using walls, you need to still check angles and play normally, as if you didn't have wall hacks. This means, if you're on CT, you're not instantly rotating off A site if you see the enemies going to the other bomb site. This also means not running into a site because you know no one is there. Some cheaters can't help but stare at people through the wall. Honestly, I find it pretty easy not to do this. It just takes practice and understanding one simple thing. You need to still let yourself be caught off guard every now and then. If you let yourself die once or twice, this usually makes most people think you're legit, if they were on the fence about you cheating or not. Don't make it obvious you're dying on purpose though. This is also how people would bypass Overwatch back in the day. If you can't help but stare at people through walls, then just use visible chams and or radar. You'll still have the information, but you won't have to worry about looking at people through walls. Chams alone are a huge help since most of the player models are pretty hard to see, especially if your vision isn't the best. With some models literally having camouflage, having chams can be a big help. If you're using an external, having boxes on also works. Aimbot. The most important thing when it comes to hiding your aimbot is making sure your aimbot is actually configured correctly. You should have a pretty low FOV and a lot of smoothing. If you're using RCS, you should configure it to help you control your recoil, but it's not too strong. No one in the world has perfect recoil control. Depending on which cheat you're using, you should generally not have above 5 FOV. All you really want is the aim assist, but not to the point where you just have to aim in the direction of someone. You'll still have to do some of the aiming yourself. Trigger bot. You should avoid using a trigger bot unless you have a lot of delay on it. And even then, I would avoid using it too much. Definitely do not use 0ms trigger delay, and don't use trigger magnet. A good player will typically feel when they get trigger botted, since they die the millisecond they peek. If you're holding an angle with an op, it's fine to use trigger bot, but don't hold your crosshair right next to the wall and have some delay on. Other features. You should avoid using any features that will make it blatantly obvious you're cheating. This includes backtrack, bunny hop scripts, auto strafe, and of course, no spread. These features are fun, but you don't want to use any of them if you're serious about being a closet cheater. This is why a good external or DMA cheat is more than enough for closet cheating, since most of the features that internals have, you won't be using anyways. Playstyle. If you're going to have the stats of a good player, then you'll need to play like a good player. This means using nades. I don't mean just throwing all your nades in the first 15 seconds of the round, either. Learn some basic smokes, or use grenade helper to help you line them up. You should also work on how you throw your flashes. One of the worst things I see bad cheaters do, they'll right click a flash and just drop it to the ground when they're about to peek. That is a very bad flash, and against good players, that won't work. Also, don't only use nades when you know they're gonna hit or blind someone. You'll still need to throw mollies and nades even if you know there's no one there. Another important thing is crosshair placement. You should always try to have your crosshair at head level placement. Avoid having your crosshair on the ground. This is something where only practice can help you. Clutches. So you're the last player alive on your team and you're in a clutch situation. If you've proved yourself a good player, do not be afraid to win the round. It actually looks worse if you blatantly throw the round or if you're completely useless. If the enemy just outplays you well, then good for him. Try to win the round, but if you can't without going obvious, it's fine to lose. A lot of cheats have a spectator list, so you know when someone is spectating you. Personally, I wouldn't pay too much attention to that. If you're going to blatantly cheat when no one is spectating you, but then behave when you have someone spectating you, it's just going to mess you up and make you seem very inconsistent. I would suggest not using the spectator list and playing as if someone is always spectating you. This is what cheaters did back when Overwatch was around. You had to play every game as if it was being sent to Overwatch. Behavior. 
Depending on if you're cute with randoms or not, you should always try to communicate with your team. This is a team-based game after all. You should give calls and stuff to your teammates, but be careful about giving callouts that you shouldn't know. Depending on how good your acting is, you can even act surprised when an enemy is hiding in some random spot. Oh my god! I had no idea he was there! Now, what should you do if someone calls you out for cheating? Well, if an enemy calls you out in chat, either don't respond or just type LOL. Don't act super defensive, and don't spurg out as if they just said the most hilarious joke in the universe. If a normal player was called out for cheats, their reaction would typically just be, haha, that's funny. If a teammate calls you out for cheating, just deny it once and move on. If a teammate is calling you out, they've likely already made up their mind, and nothing you do or say will change it. Just don't make it a big deal, and act like you don't care. Lastly, there's a lot of people who will instantly think you're cheating if your account looks suspicious. If your account is XP level 5 with no badges and it's private, people are more likely to suspect you're cheating. If you buy expensive skins, it's a good way to make people think you're legit. A lot of people are still under the impression that someone wouldn't cheat with an expensive inventory, or they're just more willing to give you the benefit of the doubt. You can also buy accounts of lots of medals, and most people will assume you're just a good player. Now you are ready to become a true professional closet cheater!